a very good afternoon everyone uh, we i just see three participants and uh, i don't intend wait, waiting because uh, since the recording will be available uh, they can uh, uh, watch the recording later because the topic is vast and i intend uh, covering it in a very short time to give you uh, the major aspects of it now all we all keep hearing uh, organic food is good for us and uh, we say okay and we go into the market and we find the whole market is flooded with organic everything is organic and then subsequently we hear news okay uh, this particular uh, vegetable is not organic there's this someone who's claiming it to be organic is not producing it in the organic way also what is the difference uh, between the organic and the uh, uh, normal other way of uh, producing food and how does it affect us and uh, the other question uh, that uh, crops up in everyone's mind is the whole world is using artificial fertilizers and there's a lot of dap uh, urea being used so how do we uh, overcome this particular aspect uh, since we cannot uh, grow our own vegetables fruits we have to be dependent on the market and the complete market is flooded with the uh, uh, fruits and vegetables grown by the uh, uh, artificial means and uh, ways and means or probably not in the organic way it is supposed to be beneficial to us so how to overcome that that will be the second aspect that i'll be covering and uh, so starting with what is organic food now the organic food if i have to define is which grows naturally with the all the minerals water and the air which happens naturally when i say naturally is it is already present in the uh, ground the water which is there which is not uh, uh, polluted which is good water the, the microbe present in the uh, ground are utilized by that so how does it make a difference when you provide artificial tell my mother not there tell my mother will call me tell my mother to call me so uh, how does it uh, makes a difference the difference that it makes is in the firstly the nutrients which are produced uh, like like you say okay apple gives you uh, uh, good vitamin c and other new, major nutrient so if a apple is not produced in the organic way the nutrient content of the apple will go down and similarly the absorption of such nutrient by the body will go down or let's say uh, palak if a palak is grown by uh, artificial fertilizer like dap urea or the other uh, artificial artificially manufactured fertilizers which are used the nutrient content of such food goes down and the amount of absorption by our own body of such food goes down so probably we are thinking that okay this particular food uh, i am supposed to take 100 gram let's say in a balanced manner so probably the nutrient which i'll get is probably about 20 to 25 grams of organic matter now this is firstly is the nutrient that i get and the absorption by the body which happens of such nutrients which goes down uh, dramatically besides this the toxin content in the body increases which is more harmful actually so there are three basic uh, things going wrong with the uh, uh, with the food which is not uh, cultivated organically is the nutrient content going down the absorption of the same less number of nutrients by the body going down and the third is more toxin produced in the body which cannot be removed by this food in its own uh, uh, in the whole food as such because as you know a uh, good food has got to have those three basic criteria that it it provides you energy it doesn't spike your glucose and it removes all the toxin so the food which is not been organically produced will will not be able to remove all the toxins from the body which are a result by product of eating that particular fruit or vegetable <clears throat> now 
this is uh, in nutshell the difference between organic and inorganic uh, the other uh, the other food uh, and fruits that are produced now i want to give you a simple idea as to how a fruit or a grain or or a vegetable is produced in the in a in a plant in a tree in a bush whatever the if we if i wish to uh, if i uh, classify a tree three basic components is that it has roots it has a stem and it has leaves <clears throat> so if i go to the to the process of germination till the fruitation of a tree so what happens is that the from germination the seed has the nutrient content to first germinate and produce roots a stem and two leaves if you have seen any germination process of any plant you will find it will have about a inch or so uh, roots will be developed the seed will split into two portion they probably themselves will become leaves or two leaves will come up and you will be surprised to know that all plant at the germination stage they look alike it is only the third and the fourth leaf when it produces third and fourth leaf then the look of a plant differentiates so if you look at the plant it has three basic things leaves to produce glucose the stem which connects roots with the leaves and the roots itself so at germination the seed is already carrying the nutrient to produce the first two leaves and a bit of roots so once the plant produces the third and fourth leaf by absorbing nutrients from the ground or the uh, whatever the soil contains soil or the medium where the roots have grown it produces third fourth fifth sixth leaf now this leaves which are produced they produce the food for the plant which is glucose now this glucose produced by the leaf is the process called as photosynthesis this third and the fourth leaf uh, glucose are produced by the first two leaves and subsequently the plant is able to uh, propagate and produce more leaves and produces that amount of glucose now this glucose which it produces is in a simple glucose form that we and you actually absorb it now this glucose will be same for all the plants however you must have seen the mango will differ the banana will differ the guava will differ in the taste and the nutrient content so how does a normal plant make such a difference now before i go further if you recollect 3 4 days back i had posted this very question in the uh, in the group that why organic food and before i at that i said okay why does a software in a android doesn't function in windows and in windows doesn't function in a apple ipad or apple phone or the apple software they're not compatible because all three have got different software and different drivers a uh, probably a driver of windows will not function in the mac or the apple software a driver of apple software doesn't function in a android phone similarly each and every plant has its own driver and its own software the driver portion of the plant is the microbe which are attached to its roots the software is the glucose produced by the plant so now before you get confused i basically wanted to highlight that there is a different software and there is a different driver like our phones and mobiles and laptop in each plant the software is the dna part or the dna of the plant now for example i will just take the mango tree a mango tree whenever it grows you must have seen there are two leaves and gradually it takes uh, months to become a tree and then 
it start flowering and then fruits come the glucose produced in the leaves you will be surprised to know travels down through the stem to the roots because the drivers are in the roots and the drivers of a tree are the microbes in the soil now this glucose is similar in all the plants but when these microbes that the drivers in the root they interact with the glucose they convert it as per the software into a mango or a guava or grapes or cucumber or kakdi or uh, brinjal or karela so now every plant organically has got some glucose which is a software some driver these drivers are the microbes present in the soil and they are different for each and every plant so now what happens is the complete glucose from the leaves has traveled down to the roots there the microbe has interacted with this glucose which has come from the leaves and prepared some software which again through the stem reaches the leaves and then comes the flowering part after the flowering part again the glucose again travels down the down to the uh, roots again a different sets of microbes a sif different sets of drivers they produce the fruit uh, bearing software which again travels to the stem reaches the flowers in the flowers the pollination is happened through the bees or whatever means which the next process is produce producing the fruit and we get a mango fruit now this is a normal organic procedure which i have explained to you this software that is the mango with its driver which has resulted mango are present in the mango itself now take a case where the same mango plant was not given this organic atmosphere wherein this microbe was missing this microbe in the in the in the roots actually did the nitrogen fixation phosphorus uh, calcium uh, the other magnesium whatever was required for the production uh, producing that fruit it got converted because of the microbes now supposing a plant is given everything in a artificial form it has it was given nitrogen phosphorus calcium everything is provided in a artificial manner the fruit now may have everything that particular tree but that fruit will be devoid of the drivers now what is the role of the drivers now let's take there is a organic the first part which i told you was the organic uh, mango when we eat that mango the drivers that is the microbes which converted the glucose into the mango is present in the mango so when you eat the breakdown of the glucose or the or the sugar sucrose or the other nutrients in the mango are done by the drivers microbes present in the fruit now what happens in the in a case where everything was provided artificially these drivers are missing. when these drivers are missing naturally the nutrient content of uh, breakdown in the body in our body after we have eaten that mango will go down will not happen if that will not happen the absorption will not happen if the absorption is not happen the proper breakdown may, will wouldn't have taken place the product producing uh, the food fruit itself will produce more toxin there will be more toxin in the body so that is the difference between a uh, uh, organically cultivated food and uh, artificially uh, with the fertilizers cultivated food the drivers are missing in the software so once you eat a fruit which has not been prepared uh, cultivated organically the microbes are not present there which can break down now in such absence we know uh, everything goes down and we that is how uh, are not benefited from the fruit or 
probably uh, due to more toxin, we have more problems with, the, with such fruit. Now, the next question that comes up is, how do we know whether a fruit has been cultivated or uh, uh, whatever, whenever it has come to the market and we go to the market and we buy them. So, where do we go? When we go and ask for an organic food, he's asking about uh, the price are uh, three to four times than the normal uh, normal price of mango. Now what to do? Now that you have realized that a mango, let's say a mango which has not been cultivated organically, it doesn't have drivers. Now what are these drivers? These drivers are microbes. Now we all have the necessary microbes in our kitchen. If I start naming them, you say we eat them, but now you eat them consciously. You have kadi patta, you have green chilies, you have red chilies, you have methi, ajwain, jeera, uh, choti laichi, badi laichi, uh, and the other, uh, I'm, I'm just forgetting all these, all the contents in the garam masala are actually bearing all the drivers to break down all the food. Now, if I give you a small example, small example is why do we add um, black paper in the in the in the drink of the summers, which is known as thandai. Thandai is a drink in the summers which has got lot of soft and lot of uh, black papers and other dry fruits which are there, which are which you basically soak them. Uh, there are dry fruit that is the nuts and the seeds and you have put a lot of soft in it and a lot of black paper in it. Now this black paper is the one which is a driver. Soft, soft is again a, a very major driver which contains those microbes or those drivers which will break down all this food. So you don't worry whether you are getting the organic food or not, the, it is costly. If you are lucky, you get hold of a good uh, cultivator who is producing things organically, fine. Go to the market, buy whatever it is there, just increase the driver's intake in your body. And those drivers are your daily uh, masala which is there in the kitchen. All the, uh, the garam masala thing which are, you, you have are actually the drivers. Long uh, Kali Mirchi, Kali uh, Badi Ilaichi, Toti Ilaichi, and you will be able to increase the absorption as well as the breakdown. With that, uh, I have uh, come to the end of today's uh, my part of the uh, discussion. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, ask. Otherwise, today's uh, whatever I wanted to say in the nutshell was eat whatever is available, increase the drivers. And those drivers are your garam masala. How do you increase them? Add them into your food, in your uh, normal, uh, you, when you are kneading your chapati, kneading the dough for the chapati, add into it. We have been doing it. Har sham ko parantho ke andar ajwain jeera dala jata tha. We have stopped doing that. So we slowly add these all these masalas or whatever the uh, garam masala that you have a bit more in your food. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, if you have questions, uh, you may ask. Yeah, ma'am. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, what is... 
the purpose of increasing the MSI? This. Ma'am, your uh, voice is breaking. Uh, you can can you type it in the chat? No, no, just now you said that you have to increase the driver. So yeah, what yeah, ma'am. What is the purpose of increasing it in the diet? Uh, ma'am, uh, when I say increasing it is now you were just doing it for the taste purpose. Okay. You were just uh, like, uh, like if you are making a, let's say, a normal dal. So you were putting those things for just for the, uh, for the taste and other things. Now that you've come to know that what is the meaning of them in the food. Now, probably automatically you will be putting them more. That increasing more is not that, that if you're putting one teaspoon, you start using three teaspoons. Even when you're using one teaspoon, now you will do it more consciously. When you eat, you will eat more consciously. You know that what does the uh, ajwain will do, jeera will do, <clears throat> and uh, the other uh, condiments which are helping you, kadi patta. Kadi patta, again, I've been telling again and again, no mother has ever scolded uh, her children if they take out the kadi leaves from the dal. Because the kadi leaf has already done its job when you do a tadka in a hot, uh, uh, when you prepare a tadka and you put kadi leaves, the first thing happens is the small microbes which are at the uh, backside of the leaf they, uh, because of the oil, leave the leaves and get into the oil which is mixed in the dal. Now, these are the drivers. Kadi patta, these are the drivers for your breaking down of the uh, necessary food that we eat. So now, uh, increasing your normal, normal, now when I say increase, increase is uh, not that uh, because you probably may not be using um, them every day. Uh, but like every day, if you have a pinch of ajwain, uh, a teaspoon of, let's say, um, uh, jeera, half a teaspoon methi, uh, uh, one, uh, one teaspoon of, uh, let's say, black pepper powder, and the other uh, condiments which are there, or probably a garam masala. Complete, which has got a half a teaspoon garam masala. Now, all these things will actually be the drivers for your normal food, which may not have those drivers because they were cultivated with artificial manner. Okay, sir. Thank you. Now, there was a question uh, by uh, Rupani ma'am that do you mean that pesticide effect? used in growth of vegetable will be nullified by the masala. Ma'am, uh, pesticide is a different thing. You see, the pesticide... Uh, okay, before um, uh, I talk of uh, pesticide, uh, can, can uh, you be surprised to know that the best natural pesticide is wood charcoal, uh, wood ash. Now the wood uh, I happen to meet a person uh, uh, who does uh, terrace farming. He told me that the only way in today's environment in an urban area to collect wood ash is on uh, a day, uh, early morning on the holy day. Because a day prior to that, Holika then, everyone has uh, um, um, done a fire. On a holika, then uh, every corner has got that fire. He says on every holy uh, holy day, I get up at four o'clock, go on my scooter with two gunny bags, and collect the ash from all the places where the holika then was taken place. Now a wood ash is a wood is a hundred percent glucose. Wood of stem or a plant is the best source of glucose. In, on this earth, but it is the best source of glucose for tree only, not for human consumption, because it cannot, it is, un, it is, it cannot be absorbed by us, our body. It is not in that form that it can be absorbed by us. Now, how does the wood ash become the best pesticide? Imagine 
it is the best source of glucose and it is burnt in uh, burnt like in the holika there when it is burnt then only ash will produce so the all the microbes which are prevalent which cannot withstand fire they get killed the microbe which survive are the one which could withstand the heat now imagine if i put this ash and the ash is not to be put actually uh, uh, in, in a like two gunny bags he told me is sufficient for him for whole year he said he just mixes a, a handful of ash in a bucket a 10 10 15 liters bucket water and one mug of water is enough for each potted plant for and it goes it hold good for 2 to 3 months now what happen is all the microbes in the ash have died and only those have survived which could withstand the fire if they could withstand the fire now they are the ones that they will eat the all the other um, insects or the uh, larva whatever is attacking the plant it is that is the best natural pesticide now when you use a artificial pesticide it is in two forms one is that it is put on uh, put basically uh, to um, guard against attack on the roots of a tree and the other one is it is sprayed on the leaves or on the fruits so the only way actually to uh, remove the pesticide which on the fruits and vegetable is to wash them properly to soak them in a bit of uh, let's say uh, add a tablespoon of uh, lime or uh, vinegar or salt uh, dip them in that water you may probably be able to remove 60 to 70% percent, uh, percent of the pesticides now comes part of the other thing is those things the masala will never be able to uh, remove masala basically is the uh, is the uh, part of the uh, food to produce that beneficial microbes in the body to help the breakdown of the actual food but not against the pesticide for pesticide you will have to wash the fruit thoroughly i hope i have answered you ma'am So it cannot be removed person, no sir. Ma'am, your voice is breaking. Either you get your signal right, ma'am. <laughs> so, can we wash it in potassium permanganate, and then uh, they like earlier? Uh, I remember my parents. when i was a child they would wash it the fruit in potassium permanganate although that is a chemical also but does it help ma'am uh, it uh, basically if you come to know it basically uh, potassium permanganate basically uh, absorbs the uh, pesticides so it will help naturally uh, that is only in case you are very very sure that this particular fruit or this particular vegetable is come from this area where the maximum of, uh, effect of pesticide has, has been used as well potassium permanganate is not uh, very harmful for us it, it actually uh, absorbs it is something like magnesium magnesium the moment it comes in contact with the water it it becomes uh, uh, that that is why the salt with the magnesium is a bit uh, always wet similarly potassium permanganate actually uh, uh, is something like um, absorbs all the, uh, the those pesticide whatever the uh, the free oxygen which are there so it will help and then you wash it but okay. the idea is uh, that you soak them and wash them okay and sir uh, how do you verify that this particular fruit or vegetable which you have purchased is organic is there any sign for that because you have organic shops today but how do you verify that they are actually giving organic okay ma'am uh, uh, generally what happens is uh, people have become more aware so uh, there are uh, there, the societies have come up because the test is very expensive so uh, and uh, people a bit 
big uh, societies they have actually uh, or uh, you can call it uh, there's some actually PM, uh, the farmers have come together the if you go to most of the i, I could uh, I recollect in indore there was a organic market where each food was certified by those people who were there they test it and then only allow it inside the market you if you can get hold of such market it is fine but it is very difficult it is very difficult by just observation or by uh, just checking that yes if uh, you have tested them uh, you can make out the difference if if if, if you uh, like i am growing at home uh, the organic is completely like you don't have to mix salt it is so salty exactly the the organic food is, is a total different taste. Sometimes probably you will not like the taste since you got used to the uh, ones which are uh, present in the market uh, which have been pre uh, prepared uh, artificially. But since I am growing vegetables in my own terrace uh, and, uh, and I am telling you uh, kakadi is totally, it's something like it has been dipped in uh, uh, salt. It, it Sometimes it is so salty. Okay. I am basically so, from Indore itself. I will have to check it out where it is. But ma'am, there are two ways of looking at it. Firstly, is you have to be conscious about it, aware about it, and accordingly take precaution. Like if you have, if you, uh, there is no point honestly uh, taking risk if you know that it has to be washed, it has to be kept in some time in the uh, dipped in water for some time with this. Use it. And whenever you get from the market, the first thing should be actually. And we haven't, we haven't uh, actually, we have forgotten. We were doing two years back. We all have done this in the in the uh, COVID period. All vegetables, everything. The first thing every household was doing was dipping them in salt water. Salt, yeah. So we 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 have gone through that. It is just that we we have we are trying to forget it. We did it two years ago, on, and we did it so sincerely. That, that every household, every one in the family was very concerned. Oh, isko nahi dip kiya, isko bhi karte hain. Bacche bacche laga hua. Mm -hmm. so, Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. We should, we should keep that thing going. Out. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, I mean, even fruits can be washed into the salty water? The apples Fine. and all. So, uh, even fruits like salt, uh, like apples or grapes and all that. Grapes are being too much pest. Uh, they have too much pesticides. Ma'am, uh, grapes are the fruit which lot of pesticide and lot of preservative. Yes. So, firstly, I don't get grapes in my home. <laughs> so we are also avoiding this since the I time. Don't get I don't get grapes at all. I I prefer uh, going in for uh, black reasons or uh, and I, I and I source them from uh, uh, some hilly areas where the, they don't use pesticide. Exactly. See, uh, a grapes coming from Nasik will have more pesticides and more uh, uh, preservatives than the raisins coming from Nasik. <laughs> Because raisin itself, uh, the moment it has been dried, uh, the grapes have been dried. The it has it has been automatically the shelf life has increased. So, otherwise, if 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 you happen to get the grapes, the best is to soak them in water for good about half an hour with the uh, salt or lime juice or some uh, spoon of vinegar. That is the best. And mangoes and apples and such such fruit also we can soak it in water for half an hour or so and then use it. But mangoes, mangoes. If you recollect, uh, our parents the first fridge fridge to hota nahi tha us zamane mein aaj se pehle jab humne bache the to sabse hmm. pehle kya kya karte the? Wo ek balti ke andar pani bhar ke humko likhe aana padta tha and that was the signal ki aam aa gaye hain. Yes. Kuchhi kuchhi se bhar ke likhe aate the balti ka pani aur usme aam dal diye aate the. और हम जैसी हाथ उसमें डालते थे हमारे थप्पड़ पड़ता था कि पहले खाना खाओ क्योंकि आम खाए जाएंगे पांच बजे exactly 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 और अब हम क्या करते and now what are we doing the first thing that we do the moment we get it from the market is कि चील चीलते हैं 
और सीधे बच्चों को देते हैं लो बच्चों आम खाओ no but i soak it for half an hour or one hour in the water but yes. just as a question the salt can be added there also yes 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 you see mangoes uh, again they are coming from far off with the amount of transportation and other thing and the heat which is there mm -hmm. it has to have the preservative it has to have uh, things otherwise it will never reach you exactly exactly sir okay thank you so much sir Okay, if we don't have any questions, uh, we will uh, close this meet now. Thank you, everyone.